Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we've got more details on Florabelle's skills. They put out an official thing with all of her, not full descriptions, but basic descriptions without multipliers, so we can get an idea for how this character is going to function, and also some teams that she's going to be good in, and I'm going to have a bit of speculation around teams and stuff like that as well. But obviously, this stuff will be pending, seeing what, you know, multipliers she has and exact ways things work. But this does give us a great insight, so you can start thinking, if she is the kind of character that you do want to get. Now, if you want to come here, I'll leave this linked in the description. They go through a bit of the lore type stuff as well, but all I'm really interested in is going to be the skills and how she is going to work. So let's go through it. First of all, Pounding Blow. Now, that is the ultimate skill you can see down there. At the start of battle, Florabelle summons a spear-wielding bulb sprite to assist her. Now, that is a passive portion of the altar. We, we've seen this many times. We see we Sometimes we see in AFK Arena characters have like 15 passives in one ability these days, but you will often get a passive and an active portion in some abilities. So that is the passive portion. She starts the battle with a spear-wielding bulb sprite. Things we need to remain... We need to see on this one um, is what happens if that thing dies like because we did see the spear one we saw the big ha flower hammer one and we saw the archer one uh, in the trailer what happens when it dies can it die does it have aggro stuff like that there's a few of those things we need to know but she has a spear wielding uh bulb sprite that fights with her then when casting her ultimate Florabelle summons a mighty hammer wielding bulb sprite dealing a high damage and knocking enemies within an area up in the air with powerful aoe attacks control and control effects Florabelle is an excellent choice for your crowd control for for your crowd control for your crowd control formations so with that one, it's good. what we're going to have to wait and see here is how much damage, how long is the control, because we did see in the thing that the Thorin got knocked down, and how wide is the range, because when she hit the Thorin in the other one, it was right next to her. So is it going to be the range of Mr. Carlisle? Is it going to be bigger? Is it going to be smaller? That's what we're going to have to see on that one. But essentially, pretty solid ability. We got control, we got damage, um, and we've got like an extra summon that helps us that can also be used to take aggro. I think the taking aggro side of things is going to be very important. So that is what the ultimate has tied into it then overgrowth feeds a snack to the bulb sprite baby with the highest attack uh enlarging it and granting it powerful buffs for a limited duration do not underestimate this skill it can deal significant damage to enemies in many combat situations so when we we already know what the buffs are based off this because we saw this when we actually watched the uh watch the tra the trailer thing uh we've got a haste buff and we've got a life steal buff how much those are i don't know I don't think that is where the... Sh I get, well, we're going to see where it is with the shield, but I think the shield is purely based on the passive that we're about to see and has nothing to do with this one. So I'm pretty sure this is just attack and... Uh, sorry, lifesteal and haste that she provides to them with this one. And that is the overgrowth skill. Then we have a Tiny Sharpshooter, which this completes her three active skills. Florabelle summons a short bow, bo short bow bulb sprite. If there's already a short bow... Short, dude, I can't speak... <laughs> She sells she sells by this. <laughs> All right, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck? Let's go. Okay, I'm good. I'm good, guys. I'm warmed up. If there is already a short bow, a bulb sprite on the battlefield, when the skill is cast, it will instead unleash a burst of arrows, hitting enemies within multiple shots in a short amount of time. This skill gives Florabelle a decent ranged attack capacity. So, obviously, this one. We're going to have to see turn order as well. How early into the battle does she summon this one? Um, because turn order is often like a, a, an interesting thing when we look at skills like this because you want that bulb sprite out dealing as much damage as possible soon, uh, as soon as you can. And it depends, one, how quick does this activate? And two, uh, what is the cooldown on it? Similar to overgrowth. How long does it last? When does it get cast first? And how long is the cooldown? Those are the kind of things we do have to wait and see to find out like the, the uptime and stuff like that. Also, with all of these guys, uh, I think the big hammer wielding one, I think the simple thing is uh, if, it, if it dies, you bring it back when you use the ultimate again. Whereas the other two, I'm not too sure the cooldowns on how often, what uptime they have. I mean, the archer is going to be pretty safe. If the archer's dying, I'm going to assume you pretty much lost the battle because it'll probably be at the back row like this. Um, but the other one, we got to know how whether it can come back and stuff like that. 
Next up is Protective Blessing. Now, to me, this would be the exclusive equipment because when we look at a Legendary Plus upgrade, it's normally just some stats for the sake of stats. And then the Supreme Plus is normally something fairly basic that's not like a changed effect. So the only other like main effect that we really get... Like, now, Supreme Plus, sometimes there are some, but I feel like this would have to be the um, the exclusive equipment. Florabelle's passive skill grants a permanent shield to allied summons she never hesitates to lend a hand to fellow summoners i'm sure you already have someone in mind who would make a great teammate for florabelle so they're, they're already hinting at it this is like the the most obvious thing let's let's just read the conclusion first florabelle uh bloom uh avk dreamer both excellent damage output and gentle beautiful okay that's just fluff all right so my thoughts on this I think obviously Cecilia and, and I think honestly her whole her whole weight. So her basic kit in herself. Now if this this if this is her exclusive equipment, I'm curious to see. If it's not, I'm curious to see what the shield values are. Because I feel like this this skill here because it says, because she can lend hand to fellow summoners. But I, I believe that grants permanent shield to all allied summons. So not just her own. So that, that applies for Damien's cart as well, I would imagine. And Cecilia's Mr. Carlisle. So those type of units are going to get buffed by this. And I feel like this effect, when we look at summoned units, I feel like this is going to have a good longevity with those summoned units. Because if you're giving them a shield, and when it says permanent shield i believe that means from what we saw in the trailer when she summons uh her bulbs her bulb sprouts whatever they're called they get the shield immediately so when i say when it says permanent i believe that means like she doesn't have to cast it for it to happen it's just when they join the battle they get it now i don't know if there's a cooldown like if it if that shield dissipates like how often they regain that shield or if they do regain that shield or it's just when they're summoned they get it and then they have to die and be resummoned to get again we'll have to wait and see but i think this is the key thing that will be giving her functionality in the long term despite what her own damage is because if we look like look at something like mr carlisle often acts as a tank it can often get slapped but we can obviously buff him with something like um coco and now we can get the shields as well from something like this and when we look to future units something that i think uh, comes to mind for me is a character called mishka from afk arena she starts the battle with two pet wolves with her now, if we get a character that has a really strong summon that starts the battle with them, then this just, the stocks on this go up because if that thing's like tanking for you, then it gets even better. So I think this can definitely expand over time based on this. And then her damage is going to depend on those things that we mentioned. Uh, like how long, like if they die, how long do they come back? What are the cooldowns on her abilities? But I think the abilities are pretty basic. When we look at her, she's kind of like a whole team in one minus the healing aspect. She's got the range DPS. She's got the melee dps uh, and she's got the um the tank as well by the looks of it and so like she's got like the whole dps range plus pseudo tanking involved plus cc with aoe damage i think she sounds pretty solid now what i want to talk about her at one copy if she does if this is her exclusive equipment i feel like it's you get her to mythic plus or or, or she's not really going to be that great. However, if you're on a new account, we'll have to test damage, obviously, but she does seem like she's going to function very similar to Cecilia with Mr. Carlisle. She summons the big bulb spread, it does some pseudo tanking, and then she has some damage. I feel like it's a very similar kit makeup so i think that she could definitely sub into teams easily now the one thing that she falls off compared to cecilia is that the early game meta is maulers and graveborn so if you're running like a thorin then she loses out on that bonus but if you're running say the team that often gets seen which is something like um smoky antandra or brutus uh and coco then you can run Rowan and her, and that's a common team that we see, but instead of her, normally it's Cecilia. Maybe she's new best in slot for that. So I think for new players, new accounts, I feel like she is actually a pretty decent one to go ahead and summon for. Once again, pending testing, pending all that sort of stuff. This is just speculation, but I think that in that situation, she will be good. But for anyone with like a decently, semi-decently built account, I feel like you will need that, you, you will need this passive to unlock the potential for her. But let's jump over and let's take a look at some teams because I have some ideas on teams for this character. Haven't entered the game yet. Okay, sweet. Okay, now we're set up. This is actually a really bad battle to look at it. Uh, let's just go to my AFK stage. Dude, 
<laughs> I don't want those battles. To oh, dude, here's another bad stage. Okay, pretend the wall isn't there. So when we look to teams for her, uh, as we when we look to the mythic, because I'm gonna play it like we're gonna need mythic plus for her. Like I said, if you're looking at her in like the early game team, it would kind of look something like this, where you'd have uh, probably the smoky. The Antandra, you'd have the, where is she, where is she? The Coco, and that's like your core. And then she would kind of replace Cecilia, who often runs in these teams in the front row. And then you'd often have a Rowan in the bra in the back. This is often a high deficit pushing team. Um, and I think she would go really well in something like this, uh, because then she's also going to buff Carlisle from Cecilia. And I think that's like, uh, sorry, <laughs> She would be Cecilia, my bad. And then you'd have the Rowan. But once again, like I said, I feel like even in these kinds of teams, uh, if you had her in there with Cecilia, I definitely think there's that synergy, provided you can get Cecilia to pop her ult quick enough. Otherwise, another idea you could have is just doing the pure uh, Brutus stall, where you run the, run the Brutus as the stall unit to try and buy some time. And then you have Cecilia in here with Florabelle. Uh, and then you try and basically just get, by the time Brutus, dies actually you'd have to have to see it in the back position and use the attack speed because that's how you can get your fastest to see alt and then you're like trying to get to see his alt as fast as possible so that she can as brutus dies to see alt you get this tanky mr carlisle uh and away you go something like that but that would once again require i believe her mythic plus so that's not much of an early game team but yeah in the early game team it would be her and rowan in this kind of team is what i can anticipate at this stage once again this is just speculation as for later game when we start looking at mythic pluses i think she could slot into an iron team really well depending on the range of her smash the grouping may be very important if she's got to see as mr carlisle range then it's not as important uh, but in general i think it's you know it's just good to have enemies grouped in general and i feel like if we run it in a team with iron and thorin so thorin's like your tank iron's your grouper uh, once again requires mythic plus uh iron and then maybe a mythic plus damien to get that haste increase to get us ch uh, churning energy out but also so the cart has the shield so the cart can do some distracting and and take some hits from some enemies but also tank it and so maybe the cart doesn't die by the time damien uses his ultimate and then he destroys it then he gets another ult off and then that would have good synergy with this one because then you'd be ulting more often because damien can use his fast ult after he destroys his cart uh, i think that would be a good synergy then obviously you'd have a florabelle in this team and then honestly, you could th throw Cecilia. That would give you a 3-2 faction bonus. You'd have the grouping, and then you'd have two control units. You'd have grouped enemies, which works really well for all of these damage dealers. Like every unit in this team works well with grouped units. So then you have grouped by Iron. You have Florabelle doing her stun. You have Carlisle doing his stun. And you have Damien doing his damage plus providing some clutch healing in that situation. But the thing with this team is, once you've got the grouping pretty much sorted, if Thorin dies, then Iron can pseudo tank. He can actually tank really well with his defensive setup and his shield and stuff like that. So Thorin dies first death. The, uh, Iron's, got them, Iron's got them grouped. Iron takes some damage. Thorin comes back, keeps the enemies there. By that time, you've got an ultimate off by Cecilia. Then you're snowballing that with an ultimate from Florabelle. And then you're obviously getting some ultimate damage in from Damien as well plus that like I said that tech healing and that haste increase so that's the kind of thing I can see uh, just based off what we've seen from her kit though that's what I'm sort of anticipating once again this one making use of those two units that do actually get buffed by her so I think that's going to be an interesting one to see uh, exactly how much that synergy of providing a shield to allied summons is going to actually affect it or whether it's more of like a you know just like a oh, that's cool and the other thing is we don't know skill ups for any of these things maybe with like her max signature item uh sorry <sighs> afk arena coming back to me exclusive equipment maybe it does provide I don't know, maybe damage boosts or damage extra mitigation or something like that to allied summons as well to further help them. Once again, they only gave us the basic description. So maybe with skill ups and stuff like that, we will get more. Plus, how how big is that shield? Is it fixed on the percentage health of the unit or is it based on her attack or something like that? We'll have to wait and see. But that is my thoughts around Florabelle. I think she's going to be a pretty solid unit with a good, decent bit of future proofness because of the way she just buffs summoned units with that shield. Hopefully, 
potentially some other buffs that we will see. I don't know. But I think she does have that viability that as we get better, uh, more good summoning units, then she has that synergy baked into it. But once again, if her shielding is tied into Mythic Plus, then I think you're going to need that Mythic Plus to have the viability out of her. One copy may be good early game, maybe be able to replace the role that Cecilia fills, but we will have to wait and see. Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop rambling. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you have an awesome day and I look forward to seeing the next one. Cheers.